Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video I built a lab inch power supply that used one of these really cheap volt and ammeters. And I noticed that the reading of the voltage was off quite a bit, so I decided to I'll build this as my next project. Now this over here doesn't look like much, but this is a voltage reference. It utilizes a linear technology LT1236BIS8-5. This chip has a 0.1 accuracy out of the box, and if you connect it with its trimming circuitry, you can trim it down to 0.005% accuracy. Now this in itself is a really straightforward process, just the uh, voltage reference itself, because there is not much circuitry. There are only a few components and you essentially have to follow the steps within the datasheet of the IC. If you use another one, you have to uh, follow different steps and connect everything differently or other components at all. But this project doesn't only involve the circuitry for this specific uh, IC, but this is a completely uh, enclosed box, has a battery in it, a battery charger, USB charger, switch, and all the kind of nice things to have so you can use it wherever you have the need for a high precision voltage reference. These cheap meters can be easily trimmed. They have a voltage adjustment, a current adjustment, potentiometer on the back, just have to connect everything accordingly, switch the voltage reference on, and you're good to go. So if you're going to use the exact same IC as I did, I will now show you the wiring diagram for the IC and a small change I made. The IC itself has eight connections. Only four of them are needed and connected. The other ones you are not allowed to connect anywhere. They are wired internally. Pin number one starts over here, four, five, six, seven, and pin number eight over here. Pin number eight, NC, not connected. Pin number seven, NC, not connected. Same goes for pin number one and pin number three. Pin number two, this one over here, is the in. Okay, pin number three, uh, four, is ground. And this is your output ground as well. Then we have pin number five. This is the trim pin. And pin number six is V out. Okay, so V out goes straight out. And we have the trim pin. And here's the first thing I did. The whole trimming circuitry, if you're not going to use it, it's unnecessary. If you want to use it in the future, you have to come up with a way so it's not connected right away, and the easiest is to just use switches. And I used four switches in total to make sure that I completely disconnect the trimming circuitry from the IC so it, must, so it does not influence its operation. So the trim pin, in my uh, case, goes out into a switch, and so the circuitry you can completely exclude the switches if you can trim it. Now then it goes into a diet. I use the 1N4148 diet. We have a resistor sitting over here with 27 kilo ohms. This is the exact value the manual or the data sheet tells you to use. Then the diode goes out into a variable resistor in the middle pin. The left or right, depending on what you want, goes for me into a switch and again to V out. And the other side as well goes into a switch and out to your output ground, which is, by the way, connected all the way down to your input ground. So I use in total four switches and I completely forgot one. Here's another switch in my case. And if you can trim it, if you have the ability of something that has a high precision to trim this IC, then do this and you don't have to use the switches. Otherwise, I highly recommend you 
do not include the trimming circuitry at all, or if you can get your hands on something and you want to be able to trim it later on, then use switches. The reason I use these switches is because I do not want to influence operation. My thought was if, for example, the trim pin was still connected, this could act as a antenna, or if uh, these two were still connected, we have a voltage drop through this resistor, and Oh yeah, by the way, this resistor, the variable resistor is 50k, so we always would have a small current flowing between between ground and V-out that inf obviously influences the voltage accuracy. And also the same goes for if this was still connected, the rest is connected, this could also act as an antenna and introduce unwanted noise or unwanted fluctuation in voltage. Also, capacitance is also an issue, so completely disconnecting the circuit should be uh, the way to go if you want to be able to use it later on. However, if you're not using this exact IC, uh, this is completely irrelevant to you. You have to take a look into the datasheet of your IC, the one you're going to use, and follow the steps accordingly. And essentially, that is everything it takes to make a high-precision voltage reference buy one, follow the steps within the datasheet, and you're good to go. The difference is, this device over here has a bit more inside. But to be able to show you the inside, I first have to build it, so let's go ahead and do that.
And now you saw the building process, and it was obviously a lie. The device was already built. I just needed a way to get a bit of more footage of the building process into the video, because for me, this is the interesting part. Now, let's open it up. So we have the two binding posts connected to these uh, copper wires that I just wrapped around and tightened down them with a nut. Use a bit of glue so it stays in place. I have the trimming circuitry that consists out of a diet, the 50k multi tone potentiometer and the 27k resistor. I had to use three different resistors. I don't have a 27 kilo ohm resistor. So I use two 13 kilo ohm resistors and one 1 kilo ohm resistor. I have these four switches facing inwards towards the circuitry means that it's not engaged. All are disengaged. The LT1236 is on this small PCB over here. Underneath the piece of captain tape to make sure that there's no short, uh, I hope, that this ensures that there never will be anything happening to the IC itself. The blue diet over here is connected to the input side of the IC to pin number two and pin number four for ground. Pin number two uh, V plus, pin number four ground. Use a bit of silicone to hold it in place. Then I used a ferrite core and wrapped around the input cable from the boost converter to make sure that there's no switching noise introduced into the IC. Again, used some silicone to hold that in place. This is connected with a small connector, just a two pin connector. This is the second, uh, the output side of the boost converter. The input side minus is directly connected to this small uh, charging slash protection board for the LiPo battery. Plus side is connected through this connector over here to the switch. So this switches the device on and off. And here's the charger slash protection board for the LiPo battery. I made a small cutout on the outside so I'm able to charge it and that's pretty much it. It's a complete simple device that neatly fits together and can be used for many many different things. If you like this small project please leave a like, comment down below and other than that thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!